What's up guys, YST here and welcome to another champion guide here on the channel where today we're going to be looking at a free epic that you can get by completing the secret rooms in the normal version of the Doom Tower and then after you've gathered those fragments you'll be releasing the burns with a cough to see it. Now it's also worth noting before we break him down that there's not a lot of AoE burners from the epic category that can do it as an AoE placement. So if we just have a quick look here you can see that Ultimate Gallic comes through, a great choice that I've been using on the free to play, but it's conditional by having an increased attack to get those out. We've also got a Skrank, but just remember that he is a Void Champion, so many of you might not have your hands on him, but he is top tier to not only deal burns, but also great damage in the Hydra. There's also Mordecai that you can get from putting a, a promo code in when you start the game, and then also a Kofta Seed that we're going to be speaking about today. So let's just take this off very briefly. And talk about why this champion is so good. Well, I guess starting off with the Pyroclasm, he attacks all enemies and has a 20% chance of placing a HP burn debuff for two turns and the chance of placing this debuff increases by 20% for each alive enemy. So when you're facing waves of five or, you know, just the spiderlings, there is so many enemies in front of you, you are guaranteed to be placing out this HP burn because you do not need any buff values from books. That's right, no books needed to use them as a HP burner on your account and it's on a 3 turn cooldown so cycling this is going to be very effective. And then leading him with the A3 with the Pyretic release he'll attack all enemies once again but this time has a 70% chance of increasing the cooldown of skills by 2 turns on enemies under HP burn debuffs followed by placing a shield buff equal to 20% of this champion's max HP which is what we always like to see on all allies for 2 turns followed by an instant activation of this skill when this champion is revived by Rian the Conjurer, which we'll try to demonstrate later in today's video. We can see here once again, if you're really banking on just the shield, you can place this without books. However, you do get a 10% extra value for it, and also a one turn less cooldown to make it down to a four turns. And in terms of just spiders and hydra in particular, you actually don't need to manipulate the cooldowns because you can't. So if you're facing those areas, once again, you're not getting a benefit for that. However, if you're building as maybe a main nuka or in the city of Centranus or even in the faction wars, it could definitely add a bit of value to your team here. Now leading into this passive with the Fiery Swath has a 25% chance once booked of placing a fear debuff on enemies uh, whenever they receive damage from HP burn debuffs. So it's just like a further crowd control to pair up with your freeze debuffs or even your stuns to control those waves or spiderlings in those battles. But it wouldn't be something I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to book this because... It's just way too low for my liking. I'd want to see at least 75% to make this a priority. And then last but not least, we've got the Molten Punch to manipulate the crit rate on a target to mitigate that damage incoming, right? And also one last thing I wanted to speak about in terms of the damage values in terms of these books. You know, if you are building as purely a damage dealer, you're more end game and trying to make the most use out of it, like I mentioned with the Centrano stuff, it could be something to consider. But just remember in the Spiders, you don't want to be killing those spiderlings, you want to keep them alive so they trigger those burns, therefore just killing themselves, right? So just something to consider depending on what you're trying to do in the game. So okay, the way that we're going to be kicking off today is in a lifesteal build, and then we're going to transition into a full set for mid game, and then also the end game in stage 10 of the hard mode. And it's just to show that even if you've got no books, maybe even rank 50 uh, for this ability here, you're still going to be able to place those burns as long as you've got the right synergy around him. So I guess let's just head straight into the spiders first. And it's actually really cool because we've got the free gear swapping at the moment at the time I'm recording this video. So we can go through and do so many different things, right? So we go into the normal. And it's definitely not this team. Uh, we're going to kick off with this one down here. So you can utilize just three champions to get it done, but I'm going to use five. And let's just start off with this one. And the gear that we got on them, as you see with the Akoth, is very, very low. <laughs> very low to be able to take down stage 25, which is very valuable, optimizing the amount of accessories that you can get by completing fusions or just your dungeon divers as you're taking this down. So the theme behind this one is having two um, Termia manipulators in our Cold Heart and Lawn the Cutter, who I've actually hardly ever used outside of a challenge. You can see that he's placing those burns and he's not taking any damage here. We've then got our freeze debuff because we're not banking on those fears. Because for one, it's a low chance. And for two, they've still got a 50% chance to come through and attack you. So it's just not viable enough. And as you see here, we're going to come through with a max HP very soon again. 
And we're utilizing the passive of a Croft Seer to also boost her turn meter, as you see there. And we're getting some heals out of that. Pyroclasm coming back through again. Let's go. Three turn cooldown is what we love to see. Very simple champion, but very effective, I would say. Getting those freezes out again. Max HP. Wait for these burns to tick. And this spider is down. He stood no chance. Absolutely no chance. Oh, here we go. A couple more burns here. We haven't got it completely speed tuned, I guess, because we've got so many teams to showcase. But we're almost there. And there we go. One minute and 20 seconds, but I did try this earlier and got a 60 second run. So really cool. So the second team that I really want to showcase is a bit more of a speed farming method. And then we're going to show with just three champions as well. Um, three ones only. So we're going to go with this variation, which has a reset with two cold hearts for anyone that has the luxury of that. And I'll show you all the presets as well. But let me know, guys, is this a champion that you've been considering to build? What kind of options are you trying to build them in? Are you going to go for some damage, which we will be testing today in the Classic Arena? Or are you just trying to go for sustainability, which is actually my favorite build on a Crofter Seed? You know, some of these burners, they're very, very squishy. Think about Skrank, for instance. And trying to keep them alive is one of their problems. So having someone that's actually a defense-based is something that we're really looking for here. Do you know what? I, even, I forgot to mention as well. This is with him with no masteries, guys. We're going to be putting this on together. Once we do a bit of rebuilding for the hard stage. Because I doubt we can carry this build everywhere else that we want to showcase today, right? And look at this one. This one is just under 50 seconds. Once one more burn ticks. And there you go. You can see this one's so much more viable, a lot more faster, if you could bring in these multiple max HP champions. You don't have to have a Creedon. Of course, you can use a Archmage Helmet for those stuns. You can use other freeze options like a Kofta Seed, as we just demonstrated, or just many forms of these crowd controllers. So let's just um, rebuild another team here. But before we do that, I'll um, show how we set these up. So for this one, 204 speed, very, very slow, right? Um, in comparison to some solo builds out there anyway. Uh, we've got a reset at 169 speed. 221 speed on Creed in the blue with the presets as so. And we've got the first priority on the Pyroclasm for this one. Max HPs, max HPs taking them down. Um, on this other team that we showcase first, the free to play that is uh, kind of named, but you'll see that in a second why we named it that. Um, we've got a opener on the Cannibal Might because we want to place the freeze on all of those enemies. And we're going at 221 speed on this champion. Followed by Scylla the Drakes, we have just locked off that stun ability and utilizing her as a, a kind of reviver. We don't want to be kidding those spiderlings as we've already got control. Um, we've also got Lawn the Cutter um, that basically comes through with Snatch to Darkness. But we're opening with this one to make sure we can make full use of this depleting of turn meter. Now, if you don't have a Lawn the Cutter, don't worry. There's other champions such as the one for the Raz Infusion. I forgot his name. Just thinking of ones off the top of my head. But there's a multiple term meter manipulators in the game, right? So in the Undead Hordes, in Lich, look at this. Decreased term meter by 100% and a decreased speed in the same ability. If you could just open up with Lich's one, once again, does not need books like in a Kofta Seed, just to place this, you'll put yourself in a very good situation. And he's the right affinity for stage 25 here. So for this next team, we've actually implemented an Archmage Helmet who you get before a Kofta Seed, uh, paired along with him. Because he comes through, places those stuns. We've got some revivals from another free option instead of the Drakes. And we should be able to take down this boss in no time here. We've got a decrease speed active and we should be healing very soon from that lifesteal set. There we go. Amongst with those shields as well. So ramping up that HP stats um, to get a better value of that shield is beneficial. And then now we just need to cycle through all of these abilities one more time. Let's see if we can get the perfect setup here. Because we could get the stun out now. Let's just save it one more time, right? Try to get a stun on everybody. So here comes the burns and a boom. There's the stuns. It's what we like to see here. Unfortunately, we didn't get it all the way. I'm not sure which masteries we got on him. Maybe the fearsome presence isn't active. Here we go. Burning from down. It doesn't matter if he dies. Why? Because we got Scylla the Drakes to pick him straight back up. There we go. Some ally protection as well. Some more stuns coming through. A little bit of those fear procs um, coming through as well. It's pretty nice. More burns. 
Let's go. And we just need one more cycle of these and this boss will be down. Uh, here we go. We don't really want Archmage Helmet to kill all the Spiderlings now. We want the buttons to tick. We want them to tick. But you can see what I meant by you don't want to bring in all of these massive damage dealers or investing so much damage into your burner. Otherwise, you're not getting the full value for them as those Spiderlings will keep dropping down. We've got another little revive there. Hopefully, he doesn't gobble up these Spiderlings too. Can we get one more burn off? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Take it down, one more burn tick, and it's done. So two minutes, not too bad of only utilizing three champions and 14 million damage once again coming out from a cough to see it. So okay, let's get a bit of a rebuilding process going and put some masteries on. And which masteries could you consider? I guess once again, let's just bring up the website, show you some examples here. So if you're going for more of a standard PvE, this basically means your Hydra bosses, your City of Sintranos, where you're facing some of those double bosses as well, like the Frost Spider, for instance. You might want to consider something like this to get that War Master damage and just speed up your runs. But when you're thinking about the Spider Specialist, you don't really want to be killing those Spiderlings, so you might want to consider going down to Fearsome Presence to take that down, as you see there, because this will give you a bonus chance of proccing those Fear debuffs. But of course, if you're struggling for your accuracy thresholds, you could go down to Eagle Eye as well, just to make sure um, that you're putting those out. So we've now unlocked Beast Mode on a Cough to Sid, and we've utilized some more endgame pieces, and we've gone with Perception here to get accuracy and speed out of our champion. And overall stats now is going to be 267 speed, because we're going to be going faster than Spider 10 in the hard mode. And I also want to try him out in Arena to see if we can keep cycling abilities, so it should be a pretty fun uh, playtest there. 100% crit rate, 270% crit damage, beast mode unlocked, and 459 accuracy with some decent HP for that shield as well. Um, the masteries I've decided to go with for now is going to be the Helm Smasher going down to try and ignore some defense there. And then also the support tree trying to extend the value of those burns with that Master Hexer. So without further ado, let's go try this bad boy out. And I think like that's a kind of similar build I might use for Centranos as well, just to try and deal some damage on those waves and those bosses. So stage 10, it's gonna be the first time that I've tried him in my hard team, should be fun. We'll set it up together. So this is the team that I traditionally use and the theme is I want him to be going where Ignatius was. So let's put a Cough to Sid there and get those burns out. So first choice. And that's all we probably need, right? That's all we need. And let's go, put a Super Raid on as well. So the idea here is we're going to be placing those burns for Artak to detonate. And then once we get that reset, the same kind of theme. And it should be a really cool speed farming method that we see. So increase attack coming out, not that we need it. There's those burns, there's those detonations. Come through with that max HP from Newt to detonate from those Hex debuffs. And then one more smack, this boss is down, guys. Let's go. Is it going to be fast enough to outspeed the attack here? We'll have to wait and see. Oh, he is. Perfect. So, boom. More burns come out. There's those detonations. Come through with the max HP. And we've got a nice 30-second farm to take down um, the hardest stage of the Spiders Den in the game. Coming through with 11 million damage. Really, really impressive for this um, dungeon here. So, normal mode for progression all the way up until stage 25. And carries that same theme in the hard mode. Once you've got those detonators to synergize with him. So, really, really strong. Really strong. For anyone interested in this team, by the way, I'm just going to show you some presets. It's something I like to use. So we open up with our Phantom Fire, and then we've got a first priority on the Seal of Magic, going at 309 speed. Our um, Mithral is going at 271 speed to cleanse off that sleep debuff from our Anute, right? Who's the last in our position. And we're doing an opener here and a first priority on the Brimming Silix. We've just got a Bless Bash, first priority, we want to get those out. Followed by the Burn Abilities from a Cough to Seed, and last but not least, the opener. And a first priority on the Dogs of War, because we're just detonating someone else's burns. So a really cool team, uh, for anyone interested in it. So okay, um, let's just go into, I don't know, this team here. <laughs> I'm just thinking of some fun teams to do. It's not somebody that I would probably always use, but let's try it. I think I just took some gear off Sun Wukong to put onto him, so it's not going to be ideal here. Uh, maybe I could just use something like this, potentially. I do just want to nuke them to the ground. Maybe we just get a fun reset strategy for now. All right, first priority on this one. Second priority on this one. 
And can we get a bit of a, maybe a, a buff strip in here could be cool. Maybe on the next team. So we're going to be locking them out, placing those sleeps. We've also got Opportunist and a boom. 34,000 damage as a raw hit. And then we're going to bring in Madam Ceres to try and get some better damage out there with decreased defense. Because we don't have Savage, we don't have Lethal and all of that good stuff. But, you know, it's pretty fun to see. He's coming through. He's placing some burns on his targets. 190,000 damage. I like it. Um, so now let's just take out maybe you. You in the front. And we don't have increased defense either here. So maybe we bring in Tuhana Rock. Let's try that first. Let's get increased defense going. So lock them out. Okay, so he's going faster than my Tuhana Rock now. So let's just open up with that shield. Boom. Rock D-Bar. So we're going to get that increased defense on. Here we go. Place a hex on you. You can stun yourself, buddy. All right, here he comes. One time speed, no decreased defense, all weaken. Boom. <laughs> Man, what was I thinking? This is, you see, he's pretty, he's pretty fun, I guess, if you wanted to, if you don't have better options and you really want to utilize burns in arena, uh, maybe with incinerate. All right, he's coming through again. A1, 23,000, he punched him in the face. And guys, look how big he is. Is this the biggest champion in the game? He has got to be. I've just noticed that now. This dude is absolutely massive. He's huge. <laughs> this dude is huge. Do you know what? I want to try the Elemental Madness. Um, Rian the Conjurer, Kof the Seed, and the other dude. Let's do it. So here we go, guys. We're now going to go in with an Elemental Madness team, which actually has a synergy between all three of them. I might do a dedicated video on that. It could be a fun one. But I just need to see if he was bigger than his... He is. He's bigger than Urost. <laughs> He's bigger than Uros. Or maybe they're the same size. It just looks bigger with the flames. But, okay, let's see how fun this can be. Let's place this um, HP burns. Boom. All right, Rian the Conjurer. Leave him alone. Oh, block buffs coming through. Let's get that um, cleanse ability on. Get some weaken out. And then we're going to come out with an A3 next. All right, so what we're going to do now... Let's get some ally protection. Tank him up a little bit. Here we go. Oh no, we had the block buffs on. One time speed with the weaken. Boom! <laughs> this is the first time I've used the elemental madness. Have any of you guys used this synergy before? Man, we need to try one more team. I'm having too much fun with this. Boom! Punch him in the face. 49,000 from that A1. We got turned into a sheep. Let's take down this Sun Wukong. Nice. Let's go Urost. All right. We're going to get nuked to the ground. Uh-oh. We're taking damage. We are taking damage. They're down. Let's bring back Rian the Conjurer. Come through those burns. He's down. Whoops. So there's something I really want to see here because this actually be a really cool testing for the passive. Let's get some ally protection on. So she'll revive a dead ally with 50% HP, then fills their term by 50% and places a block debuffs, but will also revive the Akofta Seed and Uros with 30% HP, um, and not the target of this skill, will then also fill their term by 30% after reviving. So what I want to see is, will it also activate the cooldown manipulation of that A3? Let's slow this down. So you should be coming in with a nuke now, right? So there we go, straight into an ability, straight into a nuke, and increases their cooldowns. That's a pretty fun synergy, right? It's really hard to pull that off. But let's just say you had maybe, I don't know, stone skin on your re-end the conjurer, you got outsped, and then you bring them back. He's coming straight in with an ally protection to protect everyone. And then he's going in to increase their cooldowns by if they're under burns. First time I've seen it in action. How effective is it? Probably not crazy, but it's cool. I wish they'll do something else new like that in the game, right? Like a three-partner combo, in a sense. Well, I guess that's kind of faction unity stuff. <laughs> to pair with Taras and Marishka to make them stronger. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Okay, let's just go into the Hydra boss to kind of wrap things up before this video drags on for way too long. And let's go into maybe a quick hard mode team, right? So you could be using a comp like this where you're enabling the damage of your Rathalos Blade Master to come through with those burns without 200% more damage. Um, we got some provokes in here and all of that good stuff, but we did take some gear off some Wukong. So we may need to... Um, who's another block buffs option I can use? Let me just put Feral on for now. I know, guys, I've been promising that video for so long. 
But we'll get around to it. And also let me know in the comment section below if you've got any recommendations for future champion guides. It's something I'm going to be focusing on looking forwards. So Firo the Barkhorn, where are you, buddy? Firo. Firo. Sylvan Watchers. There he is. So it's going to go first choice. Second choice. Just try and counter the mechanics and see him in action, right? There's nothing like crazy going on here. And maybe we could just take off the shields of Mifrana Lifebane 2. Just so we can see his shields in action. I know we're not going to get cleanses and stuff, but... It's in a Croft Showcase, not a Mifrana Showcase. So let's see the value of those shields. So Block Buff's coming in. Let's get a free regroup because we never got it on properly. So come on, Viral. I know you can place it there. I know it's the wrong affinity. There we go. There's some Hex. Coming in with those burns. Let's go. Drop the fence and weakens. And there's the damage of Raphalos Blade Master unleashing onto these targets. And we get some increased resistance and some perfect veils and stuff. Let's go to counter the head of Torment if we needed to. We're not going to go through the entirety of this run. Just didn't see him in action for a bit. Um, there's that shield buff with 45,000 HP, right? Is what you had? We're now going to get a cleanse out from the head on the left, which is not ideal. I'm not sure how fast my uh, Vizix is, but they've used all their, their abilities now anyway. But 88,000 coming out from that A1 there. That's pretty cool. Nice. Come on, Raphalos. Unleash your havoc. So let's just get uh, another block buffs up now. There's the Hex. Let's reapply everything. Physics needs to come through with a Provoke anytime soon. There's some burns. Drop defense and weaken. Raphalos. All right, come on. We'll probably get to around 10 million. Maybe see the damage of him over that time, I guess. There's the Provokes. I guess, let me just carry on a bit of this run. Then I'll come back to you once it starts spicing up with some massive damage. Oof, talk about massive damage. Let's just see. <laughs> Let's just see. Ruffalo's was like, no, we're not cutting off the video. We're carrying this on. We're carrying this on. Block buffs. Increased attack. Not that we need it, but we want that increased defense. And he's very, very fast for this team now. So we're going to be placing those burns a lot. 150,000 damage on that left head. Like I said, it's not going to be crazy. Like if you compare the A1 of Feral there, 250. But... You know, over the course of the battle, these, ad these abilities will really add up and put you in a good situation. Let's go. A1. Wait. Two, oh, my God. 420,000. I take that back. 420,000 on that A1 ability. That is insanity. <laughs> Let's go. But that was like perfect scenario on a decapitated heads with that bonuses with decreased defense and weaken. But pretty good damage there. Damn. Didn't expect that from an A1. Block buffs. So this is only the hard difficulty, so... You know, pretty self-sailing here. 480,000 from Raphalos. But we're pretty much turning into that wonky territory. And if you think about it, Vizix is a free champion here. Lydia's a free champion. Raphalos is free. Mithrala as well. And also a Kofta Seed. The only one is just Feral, but he's just placing the block buffs and stuff. But, you know... In the grand scheme of things, for anyone trying to go through and uh, do multiple Hydra runs, because we have to do three a week, right? And you might only have one or two burners available. You might want to consider him um, for one of your teams, right? Because he doesn't need any books to place those burns. He does some decent damage here around the board. And he's just a good support fundamentalist. And he's very tanky as well in comparison to other burners out there. So let's just cut this off now. Uh, what did he do up until the 15 million fresh point? We did 3 million damage out of the 15 million. Um, half of what Blade Master brought to the table. But overall, it's just burn, support, shields, and all of that good stuff. So just before wrapping up the video, I did want to break down different gear set options you may want to consider, and also the stat priorities when building a Kofta Seed. And I guess starting off... You really want to be focusing on accuracy, making sure you can place those burn debuffs for the stages that you're hitting, and also manipulating those cooldowns for places like Sintranos or the Classic Arena. Um, next up, you want to make sure that you're reaching those speed thresholds as well, so you can use the Raid Shadow Legend stages tool on the website to make sure you know where you're at. Um, so as you see here, we're at 217 speed or so in this current build for Lifesteal. 
Um, next up, of course, you want defense percent for his sustainability and also his damage if building him as a nuker, followed by some HP percent to get a full value of that shield placement based on 20% of this champion's max HP. And you may also want to consider a little bit of resistance to tank up those poisons from the spiders, for instance, if running like two or three champion combos. So as you can see at the moment, we've got a lifesteal set on, which is allowing us to heal by 30% of the damage dealt. So when you're hitting those spiderlings, allowing you to recoup all of that health, especially if he's one of your targets. And later on in this video, we of course use Perception, which you can get from the Forge, which gives you accuracy and speed, two stats that we really hold to high regards. And there's also stuff like Resilience, trying to add to that HP and that defense percent for that shield and also his damage and sustain, which is very strong. And of course, many other sets such as a Mortal, just the baseline accuracy set, or even stuff like Speed as well as off pieces. Um, and of course, in here, we've got some accuracy, trying to place our debuffs, um, some HP and defense. But you could consider crit damage if building as a damage dealer for places like Centranos. And as this mid-game build, we've got 60,000 HP, 4.4k defense, you kind of see the theme, a 217 speed. Uh, crit rate and crit damage, we've not really focused on for this one, more of a spider burning strategy and also some resistance if we need it, and some accuracy to place our debuffs. Um, the masteries we did speak about earlier in this video, so feel free to check that out. And if you did enjoy today's video, be sure to hit that like, subscribe button, have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.